This video is brought to you by Aura. Another year, another Oscars. Oh boy. Let's start with James. I thought Kimmel did all right. I'll take the most five out of 10 jokes any day over something cringier, over whatever was going on the last two years. That plus the opening monologue felt like they came from a place of uh, at least attention to the movies. I don't want to say love, which I'm aware is the bare minimum, but truly did feel like a return to form. I got so tired of hearing about how the hosts didn't watch any of the movies, and at least we didn't get that this year. But I will say, joking about movies and specific groups of people that weren't nominated does get a little old and pointless after a while. I don't see what the point of that is if, if the ceremony itself is not going to do anything about it. Jimmy Kimmel in general got old after a while. His jokes went in one ear and out the other for me. Sometimes I didn't even know he was on stage. But you know what? He was fine. Pinocchio won, uh, and that's great. Fully deserved, and I'm not upset about it at all. It is definitely funny that Disney knew they'd lose, so they decided to follow up that win with a giant Disney ad. Supporting actor going to Kihui Kwan is honestly a really amazing win. Even though it was a given and everyone saw it coming from miles away, it felt really good to see, and he is one of the best parts about the film. I did almost start crying. Supporting actress, on the other hand, Oh, brother. I thought Jamie Lee's nomination was insane. I didn't think she'd actually win the damn thing. Over Angela Bassett, over Carrie Condon, over literally any nomination for Woman Talking or The Woman King? Jamie Lee is simply fine in that movie. I, I She's not the thing you walk away thinking about. And this award reeks of, like, weird industry connections that were made under the surface because who with ears and eyes would call her the best performance in this group? It's just so bizarre to me and I feel like Angela Bassett's reaction says it all. I'm just like, what? ever. Because, you know, I predicted Carrie Condon, which was kind of a dangerous prediction, but not as dangerous as the web, which is why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web, and gives you recommendations on what to do. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit, and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. It's everything you need. It's helped me personally because every now and then they notify me about a new login or credentials being out there and you know that it's good to know these things. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link. You will be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. Go to Aura.com slash Karsten to start your free trial. Also linked below in the description or scan the QR code. I'm glad Top Gun got something with best sound. It deserved that one too. But while we're on the tech awards, let's talk about All Quiet. Listen, I I don't even hate All Quiet like that. I actually think the movie is perfectly fine. But given the nature of the Oscars, it had to be the enemy last night. It just, someone had to do it and it had to be them. I'm sorry. Not even my dad was rooting for that movie. What does that say? All Quiet ended up taking home Best International, Big Shocker, Best Production Design, Best Cinematography, and Best Original Score. Listen, I figured Babylon was getting shut out when it got joked about in the monologue for losing money. A bit of a cheap joke in my opinion, but man, Really? You're gonna choose Diet Hans Zimmer over Coke Room? That was one of the worst awards of the night, and I'm still not over it. What else we got? Documentary feature. I haven't seen Navalny. I heard it's pretty good. Just glad all the beauty and the bloodshed was up there. Best VFX went to Avatar. Can't say I'm surprised, and it also deserved. I can't- I'm- it's really funny that James Cameron was not there. Best original song going to Natu Natu was just great. You watch that performance, and you're like, yeah, that's the one. I was grinning cheek to cheek. I had the song stuck in my head for like the next six hours. It's definitely the best song at the Oscars this year. That said, I did love pretty much every other song performance, besides whatever that fifth one was. David Byrne was being David Byrne. It was fantastic. Bradley Cooper should have been up there with Lady Gaga, and Rihanna is like the most beautiful person I think I've ever seen. It was just such a step up, even with the musical performances, compared to like the four Encanto songs we got last year. <laughs> Screenplays went well this year. Women Talking beat out All Quiet. Uh, that felt like a given a few days ago, but during the ceremony, I, I started getting real sweaty about it, but thank god it squeaked in there and got the win. Nice to know this movie got literally anything considering nobody saw it. And Everything Everywhere is also a solid win for original screenplay. When you look at these two winners next to last year, I mean, man is it a step up. These are like actually good screenplays, and it feels like the Oscars rarely give them the right awards. Okay, before we get too positive, we need to talk about the shorts because, oh my god. Live action and documentary, I have no opinion. I haven't seen them. Congrats to the winners. 
best animated though what is going on here the the boy the mole the the whatever the fox it's one of my least favorite films i've ever seen it's corny it's too long it's boring it's terribly written the animation is kind of nice but other than that i have grown to despise this short film it would be a great children's book it really would but an oscar winning short film over ice merchants my year of dicks and that sailor one are we kidding i know it's an apple tv thing which means there was probably money slid under the table or something but my goodness what an embarrassment i really thought after last year that like the animated short would start going to things that weren't just the big studio ones but apparently not that whole speech by guillermo del toro about animation having its moment just for this piece of shit to win oh my god best makeup and hairstyling was also insane i thought the makeup in the whale was impressive but i was really expecting elvis given the fact that they did some impressive makeup and hairstyling on more than one guy in that movie just a bit surprised elvis got nothing in general i i was really expecting at least some of these smaller awards but guess not i'm not upset that it lost to wakanda forever i do think the costume design in that film is pretty interesting and good. They didn't even win Best Actor, which was actually a pleasant surprise. Even if deep down I do think Butler gave a better performance in the grand scheme of things, I was really happy to see Fraser take it. I wanted to see him win, voters wanted to see him win, I don't know why I was surprised. He deserved it for carrying just the most mediocre movie on his back, and I hope this leads to more success for him. Michelle Yeoh also won Best Actress, which I'm also happy about. Like the last category, even if I liked Blanchette a bit more, you can't deny how good Yeoh was was in this movie and how great it is to see her take the award at the end of the day. There's also a huge sigh of relief on my part knowing the possibility of Jamie Lee winning and Michelle Yeoh not winning didn't happen. Thank God that didn't happen. And yeah, let's talk more about Everything Everywhere because that's pretty much the rest of the awards here. It took home Best Editing as it should. Best Editing of the Year won Best Editing, which I don't think has ever happened, so that's awesome. They also won Best Director, which makes sense even if I thought that should have been Spielberg's award. I'm sure he'll be just fine without it. And obviously, they took home the big boy Best Picture. A shocker to absolutely nobody. <laughs> I, it did seem like for a second there that All Quiet was going to take it. Very glad that didn't happen. If I had to hear that blah, blah, one more time, Everything Everywhere is undeniably the movie of the year. It represents a massive shift for the industry and serves as a great poster child for 2022. It is a great best picture choice in my opinion, and I'm not at all upset about it. There's not a whole lot else to say about this movie at this point. I just hope Daniels make just the most insane thing anyone's ever seen with the check they get for their next movie. So to summarize, it was a solid Oscars. I mean, there weren't a lot of insane low points. I walked away pretty happy. I like surprises. I like upsets. Jamie Lee winning is one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> it also made me feel like the Oscars were back. And they really felt back, being in the big-ass theater with a perfectly whatever Jimmy Kimmel monologue, solid acceptance speeches, good musical performances, a few cringy let's talk to the crowd moments, but so much better than whatever was happening in the last two years. Like, thank God they weren't dancing during the in memoriam again. <laughs> Although I will say, Charlie B. Dean definitely should have been in there. When you're in the best picture category and you're the lead, what is going on? My other critique, which is what I feel most years, is that I wish awards were dealt out to more movies rather than just two movies getting all the awards. Not only do some movies deserve uh, awards over some others, but it's also just a boring ceremony sometimes if, if it just keeps going into the same thing. In a perfect world, Banshees would have gotten screenplay, Fablemans would get director, Tar would get cinematography. I don't know. That's just me. Also, Paul Meskel looked cute. But of all the highs and lows of the Oscars, my absolute favorite moment, the one that reminded me why I love this ceremony and why I tune in every year was the Little Mermaid 